Hey guys, what's up? This is Sohan and you are watching my technical spark channel. Friends, in our drive encryption series, today we are going to understand how exactly drive encryption work. I mean, it's workflow. Why we are drive encryption software are using this query, you know, I have already addressed in very first part. And this is our second video. So from here onwards, we are going in little little in depth. And by end of this series, you will have complete knowledge about the drive encryption. So without further ado, let's get started and let me show you practically how exactly your drive encryption software is going to be work on our your EPO as well as on the client machine. So for that, we'll start with the architecture. So in architecture, uh, I have already showcased everything in my DLP series. So architecture will remain same. There is no change into this particular uh, architecture. For an example, here is your EPO server. And these are all your remote client. Guys, ignore the drawing. Uh, it's just I'm using mouse. So that's the reason uh, this kind of weird. Okay, so just ignore that. And just focus on the technique. And here also we have a couple of machines again here again here and if you see this is my headquarter which means my data center and these are the remote locations like right? japan internet machines as well as dubai paris so some of the machines are connected through the mpls some of the machines are connected through the internet and few are using ipsec tunnel here we have the our agent handler also into the picture and these are the communications so this particular 445 port is used by our dlp so you can ignore this this is not uh, comes into the picture when you are using drive encryption only 443 port is must and this evidence folder also not required because this is used in dlp so hopefully guys now things are pretty much clear that for if you are only using a drive encryption then you would require one epo server as well as sql server so both can be on the same server if you are uh, deploying laser than finder machines and if in case you are have plan to deploy drive encryption on multiple systems then the each server has to be standalone like standalone server for your epo application and standalone server for your sql server so as i said there is no much change here and okay so let's move the next part guys this is very first step okay so as a epo administrator what are the things you will have to manage using your epo so very first thing you will have to manage your policies whether you want to encrypt decrypt your drive like or whether it could be a single drive like c drive or all the drive which is available in your machine it could be c d e whatever the drive available on your machines so in policy configuration majorly you will have to choose the encryption like whether it's a opar or like uh, any kind of software so these are the things you will have to manage don't worry guys we are going to learn everything in detail in our further practical videos this is just a kind of a introduction that how exactly this particular things is works okay now second thing is queries so whenever you deploy your policies and encrypt the machines the how exactly you want to you know uh, get the reporting so this is also one of the very important need that because it will give you the complete idea of your network that how exactly things are going to be work out and the third thing is reports so whatever the status you, you have in your machines like whether it's encrypted decrypted or any kind of exception then all things you will get in the reports and fourth one is recovery normally you will do the recovery you know decryption of your machines by disabling the telex drive encryption agent but sometimes if the system get crashed then how exactly you will be able to recover so this is also one of the crucial part which is we are going to learn in this video now second one is when you plan to install a uh, drive encryption on your EPO which means a policy orchestrator that would be your management server then what are the things we will have to consider very first thing to activate uh, you know and make it deployable on your endpoints you will have to check in your extension as well as package so that the manageability of this drive encryption server software will get available on your e policy orchestrator server and the last thing is optional uh, drive encryption theme so if you want you can configure this drive encryption theme or you can leave it but just to give you an idea that when you configure your drive encryption theme so that your preboot screen when you start your uh, machine so that time usually you get drive encryption authentication okay so that is something is get uh, you know replace you have the capability to replace that and background of this particular preboot screen this is also we are going to cover in next videos 
but yeah this is just for the, your information now under the third step what is really going to happen is when the Telis agent and driving description software is installed on your machine you will have the complete capabilities or uh, whether to encrypt or decrypt your hard disk so this is you know kind of a straight forward and the last thing is when your drive encryption software get activates how exactly things going to be work out as per the user so when user you know start the laptop very first he will get the pre-boot authentication screen and as soon as he enters the correct password okay the system start booting until and unless you are not entering correct password your system will not boot and whatever the password is uh, saved on your for this particular reboot authentication if you enter correct then it will allow you the system access otherwise it will not allow the system access and this is very useful yeah uh, i mean the drive encryption why because when your laptop is get stolen or maybe someone is just trying to gain access of your data it will not allow because whatever the user we have assigned into the epo okay only uh, for this particular system only those users can be logged in it's nothing like active directory because when you are in a domain anybody can uh, log into your machine just by entering their credential but with the drive encryption this thing get uh, restricted and only those users can log in which is authorized to log in into the drive encryption otherwise your data is completely safe and if it's get you know uh, into the hands of hacker or you know stolen so in those situations also your data is safe because if they wanted to use this laptop then they have to format without format they will not be able to access it and even after a format also the data which is present on your machine is not be accessible and which key is used by our transaction software that is also i am going to showcase you during the policy configurations so there is a many more videos to come okay just stay tuned you will get a chance to learn lots of things now it's a too late it's almost 1 am so i guess uh, in this video we will just stop here and from next video onwards we will start you know things by checking practically like how to check in your extension as well as uh, package how to uh, manage your user directory policy configuration encryption decryption lots of things we are going to learn guys so if you are new on my channel then please consider subscribing this is completely free it's not going to cost you anything and after subscribing you will have to click on the bell icon so that if you are interested in, in my videos then you will uh, whenever i'll upload new video you, you, those notifications will be come to you directly on your youtube application as well as over the mail so that's it in this video this is sohan signing out i'll catch you in the next amazing video till then bye bye enjoy your day